Hello, we are Dan and Mike. We're here to help you with your online fitness business to make sure you don't fall for any of the guff that's out there because, my God, there's enough of it. Guff. Absolute guff, in it. Guffage. Absolute guff. Guff a Good word, I like the word guff. Guff. Um, so, yeah, in the latest instalment, we're going to talk about... You all right there, mate? Yeah. Stroking that? Yeah, just stroking it, yeah. Mm. Not, see how sensitive and softy he is when he's Guff, guff mudder. Gu- yeah. Anything else? No. Um, Darren Guff. Guff love. Guff love, yeah. Yeah. Anything else? No. No. Let's stop there. They've switched off already now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Damien Guff. <laughs> Damien Guff. All right, yeah. mate, are you tubes? Fucking hell. Well, yeah. um, so we're here today to talk to you about mistakes we've made. One of them sat right there. Just in fitness. Just, Not, yeah. We ain't got enough time. We'll be a Mike came day. to me and he said, will you be my business partner? And I said, yeah, go on then. That was a mistake. One second, I need to do a Stephen Barlett thing. Share it. Um, don't keep it a secret. Share it. I hope everyone's listening. I hope, everyone, I hope you're all listening. Loads of you. Everyone. Or only online coaches though. Niche. Um, yeah. So, and that is what we're... All personal trainers. Online coach. Or if you're a personal trainer wanting to be an online coach, you should probably watch as well because it might be relevant for you some point in the future. I had that question the other day. Someone said... Um, I'm thinking of joining the members group. Is it good for personal trainers who are looking to start online? And I was like, well, it's all the same, isn't it? Even if you're an online coach, looking to be an online coach, regardless of what job you're in, it's the same process. So, so yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You if go. anything, you've got an advantage because you're a personal trainer. So you know what you're doing. There it is. Um, but yeah, it's everything you need to know. And it'll probably help you be a PT, to be honest. Half the stuff we talk about. Because it's about being a half decent fucking human. Which seems to be lost on a lot of people these days. Um, mistakes we've made, my 49 call. quid. Uh, is that it? Is that it? Might uh, be 99. I was about to say, at the time, time it's recording, 99. it's 49, but it's 99 now. They missed out. They're gutted. Gutted. They're gutted. Look at their faces, see? They are gutted. But those that are in on 49 are looking at this going, fuck you now. I'm getting a bargain. Because bargain. even at 99, it's a bargain, to be honest. Big bargain. Yeah. So there we go. Anyway, mistakes we made. Let me just um, get my computer screen back up again. The power because... guff girls. <laughs> oh, God. He's, he keeps going. Um, Mistakes we made. What have we wasted? Well, what, what we wasted money on. Mistakes we made. Same thing, really. I suppose. Okay. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, what's the biggest mistakes we made? Uh, well, stop for that. <laughs> uh, let's um, start from the beginning. So, I'll start with MH Fitness back in the day. Ooh. Authentic name. Um, those are my initials, obviously. Uh, and the mistakes that I made starting things um, was I didn't know what systems other online coaches used because at the time I'd been I'd been coached online. I say coached. It was via a Facebook Messenger where I would get given what meal plan I was on for the week and whether to change it. Not really coaching. Um, well, high level coaching, I think. High, yeah, top level. Um, <laughs> So I'd never really been been coached, so I didn't know what systems or processes to to kind of have in place. So I did my best version of what I thought would be best. So I spent um, fucking ages drafting written documents. It's all written documents. Don't know why we'd never thought of video back then. Um, I tell you why it's because you couldn't easily send it to people. I think. Yeah, yeah. It would have been very difficult yeah, to send. It was them. like Vimeo and shit like that. Back, yeah. in the, back in the day, I'm sure it was like Vimeo. It was like a, a, a platform. Well, YouTube wasn't a thing where you could do that. You couldn't yeah. have a private channel you no. just for yourself. Yeah, it, it was Vimeo, I think. Um, anyway, so I just created document after document and I can remember writing it and I would put my little logo up there that someone had created for me, MH Fitness. On, All on, about the branding. What? All about the branding. All about the branding. At that point. Um, and um, I would do a document, a word, like a, literally a Word document on breakfast or intermittent fasting a word document on meal timing like i had word document on word document word document, protein everything i had all of these documents um so not only did i have all of these documents um which i would send i think via email because i didn't have dropbox yeah it, it would be sent via email i would also print them off and i would put them in a ring binder i don't know if you know this I put them in a ring binder and I used to send them out hard copies to people's mm. houses so they w- could take a photo of it or, you know, f- have something tangible to, to read. Much like the magazine that we're doing. Um, diary of Which, a... Which uh, online coach in the spare room. Yeah, Not go. CEO. That's already out. You already know about this. You, yeah. Well, <laughs> you don't have it. Those in the members group know about it. You don't have it? Oh. Got a copy. How did they get it? You send us an Instagram message saying BB members. 
And then you get the members group. That's how you get it. You can't get it any other way. You can't. We're not giving out the magazine to anyone else. It's no. only to those in the uh, the members group, which okay. is a, it's, it's, it's kind of good in two ways, really. Because not only you get the magazine, but you also get all our training videos, current ones and all the past ones that we've had that have gone really well. Um, yeah. And access to all our uh, future events that we yeah. might be doing. I knew, I knew how you could get it. I just have acting. I knew, but just... Yeah. Anyway, so I would, I'll be sending that out, but I send all of these documents way too much. Um, but because I didn't know and what I was trying to do was for the, the better, I thought it's best client experience, give them all the information. They don't need to know the, all the information. It was just, it was too much to read through. Mm. And I would, um, the training plan would be written on... Um, A napkin. Yeah. <laughs> Back of a cigarette packet. Um, no, it'd be written on like, I'm sure it would have been numbers, like Apple numbers or something. No, it, were, no, it weren't even that. I, I'd made a table. I did a table. On Word.com. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the format was all off probably sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm like. Yeah, all the yeah. cells, different sizes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. fucking shit. Um, bro as you like. Even more bro than what I am now, believe it or not. Um, bro as you like. And then the... the um, Again, their nutrition thing was just in a little table on a Word doc. We wouldn't track anything. Well, we I would. I'd ask them to track, but what they would have to do is by the end of the week, send me the numbers of what they'd hit in each day rather than track it in like a spreadsheet that we do now. So that's probably the first mistake. And the point being the systems, the knowledge, the onboarding, the, the knowing what to give them, how much to give them. That's probably the, the first mistake that I made. There you go. Let's fast forward to Bison's and Bison, though. Fuck me, that's too far, isn't it? Let's no, let's go to you. Let's go. Let's go. What was the first mistakes that you made? Because I think that that's relevant. I think that point is relevant for some coaches because some of you. My point being, you might not have never been coached, and because you've never been coached, you don't know what it's like to be a client. So you don't know what you're expecting as a client. You don't know how you want it to look. So it makes sense to maybe be coached or have somebody look over it that can give you that feedback. Because what you're doing, and we often see this with a lot of coaches, is. You know, yeah, so I've got like a members group, I've got video library and they get these 10 videos. 10 videos? They're like 20 minutes long. So you're expecting them to watch 10, 20 minute videos of you talking at your fucking desk about these arbitrary topics. So my point being is that it can be difficult to know what you're doing is right because you've never had any experience of doing it right. Mm. What's the first mistake that you made? I think, well, I was with BTM, wasn't I? Yep. So I s- acronyms available. first started out was with uh, with them and obviously it was kind of a bit of a you had a system so you kind of had a predefined kind of way of doing things but I think for me that we did the same it was like sending things out on a pack you get down the fucking post office uh, and send yeah. it out you just get it all sent out like that and yeah, yeah that was the same um, I think the main problem for me was straight off the bat was again not understanding the personal nature of stuff it was all just professional it was all very professional yeah, everything has to be done professionally. It was logos, this and branding that, and all had to be you know prim and proper and perfect. Um, and I can't remember what we did. We did video updates. We'd had we did a BTN. I remember doing them. I can't remember how I did them, but I remember doing them. I remember where I was when I, I used to remember it. It was because I was with them for a little while. I think what was it? I actually genuinely can't remember now the updates, what we used to do. Did you use Dropbox? Was it email? Dropbox? It might have been Dropbox. Yeah, when we go back so fucking long now, I can't even fucking remember. That's how long ago it was. This is like, what's this now? Nine years. So it's a long time ago. Um, but one of the biggest problems I had was that I wasn't in charge of how much I was charging. Um, so a BTN, um, you know, when I first started there, my first client paid BTN £29.95 a month. That's about coaching. what you're worth, I think. Yeah. So. Of which I got 18 quid. So. Pro rata. 18 pound a month to coach someone. And that didn't last long. I think the price got put up. I remember, um, I remember my prices. I remember that I created a, because I was working at Hull City at the time, I created a sports specific coaching package. It was on Ooh. BTN. It was like, oh, you're a sports specific coach. You know, you could do that. Mm. And that price was 69.95. Oh. The prices for normal coaching were 39.95. And I was like, there's no way people are paying that. They're not going to pay it. It's too expensive. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> Looking back, you go, fuck you now. Yeah. But was was that was the fear around money was was definitely a big one. Was how much you can charge and, and how to do that. Um, and that, I mean, that ran right through to Team Box, right? Mm-hmm. We were f- like scared of charging more money. Not me, I like prof- it. Had to be professional, had to do all these things. And it's just like for so long, we just banging our head against the, the wall about 
well, nothing's growing, nothing's happening, but I'll oh, keep being professional, keep doing this. And we were like, there's a different way of doing this. And that's when things changed for it, us. It was me that got your prices up. Thank you. Was it? There's only thing. Thank me. No, I, I won't. Yeah, because is that why you still take forty percent of it now? Yeah. Everything. <laughs> so um, everything he earns. So um, I remember where I was. I was in um, in one of the buildings when I worked in the RAF. No need to thank me. Um, it's fine. And uh, I was on the phone to Steve. <laughs> so you guys at BTN, I had um, set my own business up. Uh, and Ben had offered me a job at BTN. And obviously I weren't agreeing finances, and Steve rang me. Did I, did I just say Steve was my coach at the time? I think I did. Steve used to coach me at that, at that moment in time. That's how I kind of got integrated with you and then the whole team box thing. Um, but he rang me, and I encouraged him to leave because um, I was like, mate, I'm charging more than you. I set my business up like four months ago. So when I first started, I was doing 195 a month for three months, 175 a month for six months, or 150 for 12 month contracts. Um, that's what I used to do. And on that pack, what I used to do is they used to have a place to sign and they would sign the physical thing and then send me a picture of it. So I used to run contracts, basically, at mm -hmm. the time. And I was like, Steve, I charge more than you. I was like, this is why I'm not joining BTN, because Ben wants to take 20%. And I, at the time, I remember it, I was earning six grand. I was like, he wants to take 20%. I was like, that's like 1,200 quid. I'm going to give him of my current stuff. I was like, Polly, at the time, I was like, she had one client. I was like, but yeah, I would get the same benefits as Polly, mm -hmm. and I would be paying so much more. Um, and that's what encouraged him to leave. And then obviously he brought you and Chris with him. Because I went and competed, and Steve came to stay with me. So we stayed in the same hotel or whatever, and we discussed it more. And he was about to run a retreat over in Marbella. Was it Marbella? Mm -hmm. Mike's gym. Yeah. Not mine. Um, and he was about to go and run a retreat. And I think Ben had like taken it off him or something like that. It was like mm -hmm. his thing and he'd taken it off yeah, him. Yeah. And then he was like, right, we're fucking leaving. And then that's where he said that you and Chris were on board as well with it. So when you guys came over, no need to thank me now. If you're only just knowing this now, it was me that said, you guys need to be charging more money because I was paying Steve. I was paying him fuck all. And I was like, I'm charging more than you. You've been doing this longer mm. than me. There you go. Well, I don't, even, I don't want to thank anyone, mate, because I'm sat here now with you doing this. I can, uh, turn out You're welcome. So. Turn out for the worst, isn't it? But um, yeah, no, that's... I think a lot of coaches, one of the things they do is they, they do undervalue what, they, mm -hmm. what, what they're worth. I think we see that a lot. And look at the current... Currently at the moment, I think things are obviously a little bit tough. Um, and, and I know people who feel like they put their prices up too quickly. So I think that's another thing to touch on is that I think the way that we've done it is on the slower end of things. Look, I think some, I think, can you charge £300 a month for online nutrition and training? Yeah, 100% you can. And you you probably provide enough value that you're, you're worth that. But it's my opinion that you should slowly build up to that and you do it from a position of authority, not of a position of needing to do it and all that sort of stuff and just because someone's told you to. So the way we did it was we were like, so we charged like 150 175 based on those those same things. So, so just interesting enough before you start, when I moved on, when when I came with you, obviously we removed those packages, but it, and it was about like one fifty or one seven five. I think it was like one seven five. We started to charge or one fifty. It was one of the two, because Steve didn't want to charge that high amount. Yeah. So it was one seven five for six months. One, seven, one five five for twelve, for 12 months. Was it? Yeah. Okay. There That's what go. we charged. There you go. And, uh, but I firmly believe that you do that in a position of, well, I'm getting this many leads coming I'm, and I've just done the last six calls I've sold at this amount. So next time I'm going to go up by £10 a month. Yeah. Next time I do that. So whereas I've got clients who, who, I've, who I've worked with who've, who've charged in maybe 225 250 a month and they've got 10 clients or something like that. And they feel like they don't want to drop their prices down because their current clients are only paying it, but they also feel like it's a bit of a, an ego hit because they're like, well, I'm worth it, which you are. But you also have to earn the right to charge that amount of money because you are worth it, yes. But... I've still got clients paying me rates like the equivalent to that almost because they've been with that long and, and I honor that and, and or maybe the packages have changed slightly in terms of what we offer. But the point is you then increase the prices once you're in a position of being full. You do that because you're full. So I would always recommend to most people that you stay on the, the slightly lower end. 
you get confident selling, you get confident doing all that sort of stuff, then you can start pushing that price up too near those sorts of numbers that we're, we're talking about. Again, it's just not sexy, is it? You'll it's get not, mentors no, like, say you need not. to charge thousands and it, yeah. it wows you. Oh my God, thousands, it's going to be amazing. And when us here again now charge less. Like, it's not sexy, but it's the right advice. But it's like, but how many people can sell a thousand pound package over the phone? Less people than can sell a hundred fifty pound a month package on the phone. Mm-hmm. Right? And again, we talk about recurring and all this sort of stuff, but... I know people who are listening to this or watching this who will be sat there going, yeah, my old mentor told me to charge £300 a month or 250 because I'm worth it because people will buy it, people are spending it and they, and they are, but they're also spending that on people who are full, churning out social proof after social proof after social proof and who can command that price on the phone because they've built a relationship with their audience because they've got a big enough audience that they know who they are. You've got 10 clients and you're worrying about where your next lead's coming from and you can't convert on the phone. So if if you're getting... One out of two signups at three hundred quid a month. I would rather get two out of two signups at one hundred and fifty quid a month because you've got twice as much social proof. Yeah, and you can make twice as many mistakes in the early stages to be better coach in the future. But yet, people want to keep the the client numbers down and because yeah, the they want to work less. Mental. Definitely want to do what less work. Yeah, mental. So, yeah, do more. It's actually the other way around. You yeah. should be aiming to service more people. Oh, kinky, um, and um, get the results. And then you earn the right to then charge £300 a month because you've got the results to back you up. Yeah. But there is a lot of coaches who've got 10 clients going, yeah, I charge 300 <coughs> Bring it down. Like, yeah. Bring it down. Yeah, you give great video check-ins. Yep, yeah, great. You've got these qualifications. Great. You've got 10 clients. And you can't actually speak to the people that are following you and put across how valuable that is to, to, for so that it's worth 300 quid. Yeah. So it's all well and good having something that's 300 quid, but if you can't sell it for it, it's not worth 300 quid. Mm-hmm. People say, oh, I'm worth 300 quid. Well, are you though? So when you've got 50, yeah, when you've got 50 people paying you for 300 quid, yeah, you are worth it. But you're not at the moment because yeah. you can't make a sale. Anyway, so, moving moving through some mistakes we've made. So we then um, joined up as a, originally a foursome, very quickly became a fivesome. And then briefly, there were six of us. And we joined the team box collaboratively. So what are some of the mistakes that we made together there. Mm. Spent too long there? What? <laughs> too long there. Um, uh, there was let's, such a let's focus... Let's talk about not just me and you, let's just talk about the business. Yeah, there was whole. such a focus on fucking Canva and being professional mm-hmm. and making things look good. Mm-hmm. And the reality was that there was a fuck all being done. Mm-hmm. Wasting time trying to create apps, pie in the sky ideas when none of us had the number of clients we really wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, like we talked about before, get full. None of us were full, and we had all these grand ideas of what we were going to do next and how we were going to make fucking and money. This, this holds a mirror up to the rest of the online coaches: is the amount of people that come in that are not full that have these grand ideas. That um, I had a consult the other day with. Yeah, we're thinking of trying to go over and, 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 and crack America and get more clients from America. How many clients you got? Ten. Ten in the UK. Right. Okay. Forget about. Yeah, it. talking like you've got thousands of clients. Yeah. Um, and you get these people go, I mean, I had one client, not my client anymore. Um, I really need you to help me with my SEO on my website. You had four clients. Okay, You don't need help with SEO on your website. You've got four clients. Yep. But yet would proceed to update me each week about his website. And I would say I don't need to see your website. But anyway, my, my point being is that learn from what we've just said is that don't get distracted by the shiny object. We're telling you the things to do um, because we've been through it. We're not saying this because we want to make money out of you. We're saying this because we've been through it. We employed an app developer when we were at Teambox. He quit his job to come and work with us. The app never got made. Um, We would focus on Canva images, branding. We made about fucking 50 different versions of the same spreadsheet to track stuff. It was all fluff that was distracting us away from just doing marketing, from doing our job, getting our face on camera, putting our personality over, um, and fundamentally that's what changed when we left team box we stopped recreating all the, the stuff we've made one i say we you've made one version of that spreadsheet th- that we started using and it hasn't changed one version we're not wasting time doing version 2 version 2.1 version 2.2 that's it like we did it we created something that works and then you know that you focus more time on your marketing b- building your brand and that's what we did and we went from not being full 30 
or it was between it was always between 25 and 30 we would sit and we would panic when we hit 25 24 shit need some clients in but yet we're wasting all this time we weren't allowed to do a cta until the group did a cta yeah we were yeah so that's another thing we'll talk about that as another mistake i guess mm-hmm. but what we fundamentally did is when we left we put loads more time into a youtube channel putting more content out i personally went from 30 to 50 within about a month i think something like that mainly because i had about six of steve's clients come to me but it is what it is. Um, sorry, mate. Um, how is your mum's? Um, he won't. <laughs> he won't see it. Um, that's bad, isn't it? Maybe cut that bad. out. Yeah, well, it's in there now. It's in there now. It's done. Um, they won't remember. They won't remember now. But, um, yeah, so that's what changed. And that's what kind of had been holding us back a little bit. Um, so, yeah, then... I guess next mistake. The other one was like not. Um, I remember they used to have a big thing about um, looking needy, looking desperate for clients. Yeah. So it would only be you know if if Mike had lost four clients, for example, which happened regularly. To be honest, um, if he lost say four clients or whatever, and I'd lost three, it was a case of we'd wait until we'd all five. I reckon you'd lost. We all yeah. We all did a CTA as a group as a collective, which again, looking back, is the most ridiculous thing you can do because people want to sign up with individuals, not the fucking business. But you know, it was it was done that way. It had to be done that way. So it was like once every sort of two or three months, we'd do a group kind of launch CTA, and we might get the odd inquiry in between where we had a you know a client come on board. We weren't allowed to do CTAs. It was like desperate looks desperate. You don't see the best people in the world having you know doing that. Yeah, they don't do that. They just rely on their, you know, all their all their skills and professionalism and whatever. Um, and but, it was like, and like but, Mike but said, we're not, but I, we're not the best people in the world, Steve. Yeah. And yeah. we don't have loads of clients coming through the door. So, you know, yeah. can I hold on for these next two months until the next CTA? Literally. And it was like the reason you went from thirty to fifty was because we started posting. Well, I think there's a little bit of people wanted to see what we were doing because we'd left, obviously. We were then doing a lot more personal stuff behind the scenes, what we we're up to, the fucking stupid shit we were doing, filming. And Mike, I think, a little bit more than me, was doing loads more CTAs and posting all his clients and being like, look how fucking great these clients are. Look how great I'm taking on clients, buy some matter. Because um, we officially decided to buy some matter then, haven't we? Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. And, and mine, mine was the same. Mine was, mine's just a little bit slower than Mike's. I think I probably went from 30 to 40 in the month, in that month, probably. Um, and then it grew consistently from from there. And it's, it's frightening looking back, isn't it? When you look back and go, the amount of time we wasted. But that's again, like why we're here doing this is like, because we got in front of camera, we were doing videos. We knew they were going well. People were loving them. And we were, well, let's roll with this then. So we started off with Facebook videos. And I think the one thing that we're quite good at, I think people need to get better at in general is trial and error. We never sat there and went, oh, I wonder what would work. Oh, let's, and just, and just how come up with ideas. We were like, well, let's try it. Yep. Let's do it. Now like we did YouTube. It was like, right, if we do this, we've got to do this for a year. You can't just fuck around. Like you've got to do it properly. Did it for a year. It worked. Mm-hmm. we did it we learned from it we did some videos that didn't go as well some videos went better we looked at the analytics looked at the, looked at the data we knew that camera images weren't fantastic for bringing in clients <laughs> so we sat that idea off yeah. Um, yeah and I think that's the thing for us is that we very quickly then realised what works what doesn't work and it was well we did the opposite of what we're doing so we were more personal we were on our stories we were being ourselves doing CTAs getting on video watch what happened well double client numbers that, that, that's the lesson as well is that when you're trying to make this perception and again, another thing was there was talk of us having a. And this is you'll you'll laugh, you won't. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna have an office in California one day. Yeah. And me and Dan were like, right, really? Because we're all struggling for clients. Yeah. Um, on the outside, it looks great. And when we left, we were like, God, we'd never have known. We, we you know, we thought it looked amazing. And, uh, you know, and I think we may be downplaying it. It was, you know, we we did we did we did well. We ran client retreats. You know, we weren't, you know, spoke up body power or had a stand, and uh, we had we we ran podcasts and we had good guests on. We had fucking Jeff Alberts and Cliff Wilson and uh, I think Lane Norton came on one. And you know, like I think we we downplaying it, but it wasn't as rosy as what it seemed on the outside, um, because because of those differences of opinion so we were actively encouraged to not be personal we were more encouraged to be professional because that's what our brand should be or that's what a company or a business should be but that's fundamentally incorrect um because it's a personal brand it's a personal company for example if you were a therapist um you would want to you pick a therapist that you click with you wouldn't pick a, th- a therapist just based off a brand or a logo or uh, well I don't know mate if they had a good camera image on their Instagram yeah, if they had a good cam- camera image yeah uh, that's the thing is that you would you would go and you would see if you got on with the person first you would connect with them um, 
But anyway, so so that's kind of what we learned. And we see too many coaches doing exactly the same thing, trying to come across too professional, trying to educate their audience rather than just saying what they want to fucking say, putting their opinion over, just being outspoken, giving their real thoughts on something, saying what pisses them off, ranting about something, saying that this is annoying. I fucking can't believe I've had this client. We did a feature called Coach Cunt um, for weeks on end, we used to do it, where we would get clients who would, being given a supplement list, for example, of 13 supplements, and we would read the supplements out. Useless, uh, stabilizers, your pancreas, well, that's stupid. And w- like we would put, we weren't scared of saying what we wanted to say, whereas before we had to monitor what we had to say. And through monitoring and restricting yourself, you, you never feel really fulfilled in what you're doing. It's not authentic to yourself. You don't attract the right type of client, and you're not going to really attract as many clients by being vanilla. So learn from it. I think that's the, the biggest thing was... We've the reason we say this stuff to clients and we say be yourself, put your personality out there, post what you want to post, be authentic and stuff is because we weren't for a while. Like, I'll hand on heart say that we were just focused on being professional. Like I said, it, it, in that company it was just about the business, fitness it had to be that it couldn't be personal stuff. There's loads of fun stuff we were doing personally outside of that we just never showed. We never were allowed to show that bit of it. And then once we started putting up stuff and we were just having a laugh with it and we were again, tagging each other in stupid shit and doing stupid shit together, you start noticing all that engagement, all that stuff going really, really well. You start noticing people really enjoying it and talking about you in, in, in the positive way. And I think that the hardest thing for coaches is for them to realize that they want to put out their fitness stuff. They want to put their fitness advice, and their training advice, nutrition advice, because it's safe for them because they know that is true. They know that that's true. And they know that that's fact and they know that you can't make judgments on that. They're happy to slag off these people that Stephen Bartley gets in his podcast saying that calories don't count and matter and all this sort of stuff. They're happy to do that because they feel comfortable. They're not happy to put up their own life for fear of judgment because they know that that isn't necessarily what someone else deems to be true or right or correct, but it's just their opinion. But that is the thing that fundamentally gets clients through the door. Fundamentally, across the board, like we've noticed, is that we've gone from where we were to where we are now not because we've done if anything we've done less training and nutrition courses and knowledge in fact probably since we left team Box, we don't think we've done one i haven't done one i can't think of me one. me and you went to something we got invited to one revive stronger we did he invited us down and yep. i think mike is was talking yes he was yeah we filmed it for youtube didn't we and that gabriel fundaro i think yeah so one that's it i think We've been to some MNU things, maybe. Me and you have been to MNU, MNU. stuff. But that's more for the night out. Yeah. Um, and, and as, but anyway, on that, you also go to these things and you realise you're getting taught something you've already learned before anyway. Like, but the point is that it's not needed. Like, it's just not... You don't need more nutrition and training and help and, and advice. You don't need to upskill in that area. It's really not that at all because, like I said, we did all that. We went to all those things and we posted all the camera images about them. It's once you start putting out your personality and you start doing that side of stuff, stuff that is scarier to put out because it's you and it's real. Um, that's the bit that makes connections with people, not about whether you know about mitochondrial biogenesis and the Krebs cycle and, and whether that feeds mm. into the fat loss cycle at the exact phase of the lunar cycle that you um, are in currently because of the way the moon is. Do you know, it's just not important. It really isn't. And I know that's not scientific. I was just joking. Um but people think it's still about that. They think that their gaps are in their, their, their you know, nutrition and training knowledge. And the gaps are in your ability to turn up on Instagram as you, mm-hmm. believe it or not. So then moving on to biceps and banter. Um, so I'd probably say, what was the first mistake that we made in that? Um, probably employing a coach. Probably too soon. Probably, yeah. I think employing a coach and, and also not having the structure in place to handle that was yeah. probably the main thing is we were just clueless. Everything before that was fine, weren't it? The yeah. YouTube was going well. Instagram was good. We were both, you know, picking up clients. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a waiting list at one point, didn't we? Because that's where we got, yeah. uh, like I said, we got close to the VAT threshold. That's the where we waiting was, list. Yeah, the brand was looked nice and stuff and yep. I think we've been invited to a few things like, you know, Revive Stronger. Luke Johnson, remember... Um, invited us down to mm-hmm. for the de novo launch and i, I think people were recognizing stuff um but i me think probably yeah definitely you probably recognizing me yeah well 
behind the camera uh, <laughs> who are filming me, yeah. The sure. cameraman, I am the cameraman. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think it was probably bringing on a coach too soon. Not that um, we regret bringing her on, but we weren't in the place to. We, oh no, it could have been, it could have been any coach. It, it, we yeah. were just not in the right place to bring someone on because of, I, I think the one thing that no one teaches you about that is that you instantly become someone who has to be a manager and managing people is a very, very unique skill, I believe. And I believe it's one that we're still not particularly brilliant at, to be honest, if I'm holding my hands up. But yeah. I think it's something that requires a certain set of skills. Um, I will find you. Um, no. Take it does require a certain set of skills that um, that's, that's needed for that. And we weren't ready for it. We didn't have the setup right. We didn't have the infrastructure correct. We didn't have any contracts, any sort of standard operating procedures in place, despite Suck telling us we needed them. We just didn't have it. Um, we thought that it would be all right and we'd just be able to just chat our way through it and stuff like that. And um, probably led to, uh, and then again, again, the same, even with the second and third, I would say even at that point, we weren't in a, in a great place to, to be doing that. It just so happened that some of them worked out a little bit better than others because they needed a little bit less maybe input from us, which again, isn't any, any other coaches faults or anything like that. It's just that some people just picked up and ran with it a little bit more than others. Um, I would say it's only really now that we're in a position where we know what we're doing with that when we bring someone on. Yeah. To be completely honest. Yeah, that was a, a big mistake is that we didn't, we had a waiting list and we were like, oh, fucking hell, what are we going to do? How how can we almost get around it and service these these clients in? So we brought on our first coach who, I um, don't know if she'd been coached by you as well as me at the time, but certainly by me. Yeah. And eventually she'd been coached by both of us. Um so we'd, we'd, we'd met her, we knew her, we liked her. And, she, you know, she brought a different element to the brand and we just went about it the wrong way. Like there was no system, like you just said. There was no, we didn't know what we wanted her to do. We we had no financial stuff in place and it just was like, right, there was no thought behind it. Just let's bring on a coach. you gotta you got to have thought. So that's definitely one of the first mistakes. Not the first, it's not a mistake that we brought somebody on, but we just, there's a better way Didn't of doing it. it. Very well. yeah, th- yeah, there's yeah. Pr- processes. Um, next mistake. What would you reckon? We tried to develop the app, didn't we, from Blitz? Yeah, spent time and money. Um, I don't know if that was a mistake. I think it was a, maybe a. It, we got to a point where the way we were doing it with the group coaching was we had a lot of people coming through it and we were like, if this grows anymore, we may need to find a different system to handle it. And rather than like use one of the normal trainer apps that people have, we were like, let's design our own. Like, And we got a pretty good price for, for it. And again, fundamentally, nothing wrong with the app or the app designer or anything like that. Not that they're going to watch it, but that was fine. It was more a case of we just didn't need it. We just thought, again, it would be something else that we can add to it. I don't know, can't remember how much we paid for it now. Six grand, six, like six seven grand. Um, and we were like, oh, it would really help. And then what we actually realized with, with Blitz was actually we didn't need it. And actually it was going to be a huge ball ache. And actually it was going to make things just as difficult. Um, and, and and I think if we were to gonna grow it, you know, big, big numbers, you would need that. But I still think you could use some of the popular ones that people use these days so we we kind of did that and we designed it all and then realized actually we we didn't want to use it um so that was six grand and time and effort oh, and a lot of time and effort into that and distracted yeah um is that about it we had a va for about three weeks we had a va yeah um, we again ran with the hype when all everyone was talking about it and, and it was kind of a new thing and we'd, we'd known other people that had VAs and they'd gone really really well and all that sort of stuff so we hired someone um, and again just didn't understand how that was going to work it was the we stuff two VAs aren't we stuff she was sending yeah well, no the other one wasn't really the same in the same way that other people thought it was like messaging people. Yeah. The first one, the Filipino one we had was messaging people. Yeah. Um, the messages she was sending just weren't right. We weren't happy with the way they were done and the way it was going up. It was, it was just all wrong and it just wasn't working in any way, shape or form. And we were just, it felt a little bit like there's no need for this. Like it's just not necessary. Um, that was the first one. The second one was more to do with the content. She was more hired to create better yeah. looking content for us for our coaching page. Yeah. Um, out of the stuff we'd already had. 
And again, she was all right, but it was just like, it would, it's just not the same. Again, anytime we've hired someone else to do a job that we can do, it's never been as good. Basically, that's the hard thing with all this stuff. Yeah, I think I think it, there's an element of it where it's where where we're rubbish, not rubbish. We're we're not the best at managing because we're so used to doing things ourselves. It sometimes feels a little we, bit. We're not good at telling people the standard at which we expect yeah. stuff to be done. We just expect it to be done to a high yeah. standard. We we know what we want it to ha- look like in our heads which is often aligned. We often have the same view of what it should look like, but we can't explain to someone when something, they go, oh, I've done this, it looks really good, doesn't it? And we're like, no. Yeah. In our heads, we're like, no. But we're like, we also don't have the heart to go, no, it's not, get better, because they think they've done a great job. And we're like, that's not what we wanted. To, and we're just not good at articulating what's in our heads. To some extent, we, we basically got an influencer that's, that's posting about Blitz at the moment. We've paid a lot of money, £9,000. Um, and it's not had the return that we would have expected. But I also don't think that the content has been maybe what we would have expected or as immersive as what we would have expected. But we've not said anything. It, we're, we're very much like those people who go, you know, when you're eating a fucking uh, horrible meal and they go, everything all right with your meal? And you've just been complaining. You go, yeah, no, it's lovely, yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah, it's shit. Yeah. But we're very much like that. We're very much like, we don't want to, we're not, you know, we're not know, as ruthless. Or do we're you know not what it is? Do you know what it is for me? It's I only want to work with people who, without much input from me, have high standards and almost know what's expected without you saying huge amounts. And that's me, I think, as an, I think I've, I've used that as an excuse. I've used that as a, that's the reason why I don't want to go out of my way to have to make people better. But the, the reason that I always come back to that is that I think if every single person we'd ever worked with was like that, then it's a problem that we've got. But the fact is that one out of every five people we work with is like that. And they do know what we want and they are on our wavelength and they can figure it out. And they're the ones that make me go, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. So you're almost prepared to work with a few people you maybe don't understand to find that one who does. And I think we're getting better at realizing yeah. the traits within those people that are like that. Um, but for me, if you're paying that amount of money, you shouldn't need to put anything into it. You shouldn't need to have that much input. Yeah. It should be, this is what's expected and what's done. It's just like, if you don't know that, then you don't need input from us. Like we're paying that amount of money. You shouldn't need input from me. That's my, that's my opinion of it. With the VAs, when you're paying, you know, such a small amount of money, I get it. I'm like, look, this is not your fault. Yeah, this yeah. is not your fault. This is just, this is just us. We ain't got the time to do it. If we did, we could probably make it work, but we're not going to. Can't be bothered. Um, so I think that's, that's part of the problem with it as well. Um, I think sometimes we expect too much. Mm because we expect the same back that we would give mm-hmm. and that doesn't happen half the time. Like I think even with mentors and stuff like that in the past, it's, it's not that anyone's been, been bad. It's just that for what we've paid, we go, did we get anything back? Do we feel like we changed fundamentally from it? Do we feel like we had an, an experience where we have changed how we view the world or view business? And it's like, mm. not really. Mm. We picked up a few things from, from some people. Um, the best one being Suck was our was our probably the the, well, the first one, wasn't he? Probably mm-hmm. he was the one that really helped us realise where we were going wrong, where we are going wrong. Mm. Um and, and still a good friend to this day. So like, you know, it just shows. Like thinks the same as us, same wavelength, prepared to work hard, has worked hard, um, always thinking of different things to be doing and, and stuff like that. And then I say a few others since then, you could go look at it and go, Well, could we fit do we feel like we would have we should have got more? Probably. But Again, I also don't blame them. I don't because I think that we don't give huge amounts out. Mm-hmm. We're, yeah, I think at the time we may be looking for something else, looking for something maybe a bit more magic bullet. Not that we were, but just looking for a bit more inspiration around stuff. And I think by doing that, we realise that it's it's within us anyway. If we just have if it's in you, <laughs> I'll find it. I think that's what helped us trust our gut more, because we I think off the back of those experiences, whilst that probably experiences four of them. I think four people, five people that we've gone to for help maybe. Off the back of that experience, I think it's taught us to go, we can trust our gut now mm-hmm. because we know what should be done. We've got common sense. We know our market. We know our niche. We know those things. And actually we just have to trust ourselves a bit more, which is a good lesson to learn. Like you could argue that all that money invested, you go, well, that's a good lesson to learn. Yeah, look. It's money well spent. It, it, yeah, it is what it is. And we would never have learned those lessons without making any of those mistakes any of those listed and that's the reason why we wanted to do this 
to, to, to do this video is because there'll be people that continue to make the same mistakes and you'll continue to learn from it and we just wanted to give a bit of an insight or a foresight of not foresight hindsight um, with what we've done and um, and how we've learned from things and we're still learning and we'll continue to learn and I think from that last point you know it's either be better as a manager or be a better recruiter I think we're probably airing down the side of being better recruiters and um, to take the burden off management being as much because I think we do have high expectations of people and I don't think we're prepared to give as much time to manage them because we almost feel like we're we're looking for a certain set of attributes. Mm. Uh, otherwise, you're not right anyway, if that makes sense. So, like, I think in that, that scenario, you either need to A, be a better manager or B, be a better recruiter. And I think we're, we're definitely getting better at the recruitment side of things of, okay, what do we need that fits into the business and so on and so forth. Mm. Um, but, yeah, hopefully some people have learned from Yeah, like, things. again, like we said, we didn't want people to ever think that it's all sunshine and rainbows and it's all fucking fantastic. And Because you do make mistakes, obviously... And, and again, we're not going to shout about them on Instagram every single time they happen or all this sort of stuff. So again, remember that. It is all highlight reels. It is all this sort of stuff. This will happen in everyone else's business. Every other mentor you see that talking all this shit, they'll have shit times as well, shit months, shit things going on. Of course they will. And they just don't really tell you that sort of stuff. But I think it's important that you remember that. That's, again, without being really fucking cliche, but it's how you learn. It's how you grow from all this stuff. Um, and that's why I encourage everyone to do it with, even down to something as basic as their content, making mistakes, even all the way, all the way up to stuff with, with, with financials and stuff like that. Like I know people who've messed up their taxes and they've missed a payment and then they've learned from that and go, well, they ever miss another one again. Do you know, it's stuff like that. You go, there's, there's little mistakes you make with, with clients on a weekly basis that you go, oh, shit, I'm going to learn from that, learn from that. And you learn from it. Of course you're a better coach for it. You're always a better coach for all those experiences you fuck up. And I think with this, it's no different. People are just so afraid to fuck up with this because mm -hmm. they think it makes them look really, really bad. And <laughs> we're all human so yeah that's it share it and stuff yeah share it and stuff please and um yeah there you go have a good one bye